Yellow. It's a pity it's not 148 scale, but we live in hope, yeah, fingers crossed. I was quite surprised at the size of the box, but it is full of plastic. Nice surface detail, and I love the way they've gone about with the internals. It's like a nice jigsaw puzzle, and it all fits beautifully. Same approach for the outside. There's a lot of parts to end up with the final overall shape, and even dry fitting, most of the seams need a bit of sanding. It's just a small gripe, but that's what happens when you get an overcomplicated assembly for a small shape. The wheels are let down and there is a resin replacement set out there. The armaments, uh, they are usable, but I toyed with the idea of maybe sourcing some Sea Eagle missiles. I think they would have just finished off this buck in here. In the end, I just used the slipper tanks and that was it. Decals are very nice, very nice indeed, but I didn't use a lot of the stencils. At this scale, I think they're just too much. Maybe 148, definitely 137, but not 172. Just my personal opinion. So let's take a look and see how the build went. It's a very nice artwork. So let's take a very quick look at the contents. Start with the cockpit. Before I start applying the dark grey to this cockpit, I'm going to cut out all the relevant parts that need to be painted light grey. In other words, as soon as I finish painting the cockpit dark grey, I can just add a light grey to the airbrush and paint them all in one foul swoop. Most of the parts are all cut out. I've started to glue the undercarriage. And next I'll glue some of this trunk in. I've bought this Edward set. This is going to do a far superior job than I could ever do. But before I can add all this, I need to do some cannibalization work on some of the cockpit parts. These areas highlighted in red. The most work is on the injector seats, as you can see, before and after. So now I've got the parts cleaned up, I can start to add paint. I'll give them all the obligatory black coat, and then I'll be using two greys. These are mixes I already had to hand. Dark grey will be for the cockpit area and the light grey will be for the wheel bays and the undercarriage. Paint the seat cushions and I've just dry brushed a light grey for the highlights. So I've cut all the fret parts out that relate to the seat and as you can see it looks a nightmare. So I've just got to add all this fiddly stuff twice. Well they went on relatively easy, don't know why, just luck. 
I'm just going to tone down these harnesses with a bit of a water-based dark wash. This is all the fret stuff related to the cockpit. This looks a bit easier for the simple reason there's no bending involved. There are some little levers to add and as you can see by the fret they are tiny and as you can see also I've had a go but I gave up in the end I was fighting a losing battle. Next I'm just going to dry brush a bit of silver on these fan blades. For the rest of the undercarriage bay parts, I'm just going to add a Tamiya wash and then blend it all in using white spirits. So I'm going to assemble the nose section. I've added my lead weight. I hope there's enough in there. I am worried about the ejector seats in case I catch them during the build, but they have to go in now. So all those parts cut out and painted light grey and weathered. I'm now ready to assemble this jigsaw puzzle. Well all of that was a very beautiful fit, no issues whatsoever.
Now I'm gonna to have to paint this internal framework it's like an off-white. Rather than messing around masking it, I'm gonna apply the color by brush. I'm gonna use these two colors to create a very thin mix. Now for this technique, I'll try and be as neat as possible. It's not essential that I keep within the lines. When I finish painting it, I shall let this coat dry and then I'll apply another coat. After that second coat, I'll leave the canopy for a couple of hours and I'll come back with a soaked toothpick and gently remove the excess. This technique only works provided I've got a good guideline around the frame. So I'm going to finish off building this assembly now. I've dry fit most of the bits and it all fits quite nicely. I think I'm going to leave the tail plane off. I personally think it's going to be easy to paint the model with this off. I've also added the transparent wing tips. I drilled out some holes for the navigation lights and filled them in with paint. Next I'm going to fit the exhaust shrouds. If it wasn't bad, but it'll need a bit of work to tidy it in them seams. Next, adding the nose assembly. You can see I've masked off the front windscreen and I've added the navigator's blast screen. Once again, it's a reasonable fit, but it's going to take a bit of work to hide some of these seams. Next, the rear canopy. This is a pretty good fit. I'm just going to have a couple of bits of tape to hold it in position. And then with tiny amounts of extra thin glue, the capillary action should do the rest, making sure that that tape's clear of the seams. I don't want the glue following the tape around the canopy. Last couple of pieces now, the intakes. I've already painted the de-icing rings using this paint. I just personally think this is easier to do this way rather than start all that internal masking. Now, as far as the intake trunking is concerned, color wise, there seems to be three colors, gray, an off-white and a black. And I think this intake trunking should be in black, but I didn't like it, it just looked odd to me. I quite like the contrast of the white. It's my buccaneer. <laughs> you go and build your own. I've dried fit these a couple of times and the fits reasonably well. As before, there will be seams to clean up. So I'm just going to use some Tamiya tape to secure these into position. Now I'm going to leave these to set thoroughly before I start sanding those seams. So I've given the surface a good clean. 
and I've applied this colour all over. I've chose this so that when I come to sand the final colour scheme, I don't mind this colour showing through. Talking of colours, I've mixed the grey and green, and just to be sure I'm happy with it, I've sprayed the colours, let them dry, and make sure they are okay. Now that I'm happy with them, I've mixed two lighter shades. These will be for the highlights or for the faded paint work, should I say. Before I add my first colour, the grey, I'm just going to pencil the demarcation lines. To try to cross-reference on the paint guide to the model, I'll just get lost. So it doesn't have to be accurate, just a rough guide. So with the grey added, I've added that lighter grey. And I've tried to give it that faded paint look. <laughs> Masking the devil's work. With the green applied, I'm just going to peel a bit back off just to make sure tonally it looks okay. I won't really know until I take the whole lot off. And by then it's either going to be laughter or tears. Yeah, it looks okay from here. In my excitement, I'll call it that, I demasked everything. I forgot to add the lighter green. So now <laughs> I've got to remask some of the same areas, which is always a bad idea. But it's what I've got to do. So I'm applying the lighter shades very lightly and then giving them a chance to dry. That way I get to see the final shade. If I think it needs more, then I'll add another layer. But it is all about building up gradually. With having enough of the paintwork to dry for a good few days, I'm ready to wet sand the surface. This will get rid of any loose particles and will also flatten the surface, ready for the satin varnish I'll use to seal the paint in. When that's dry, I can then add the decals. With the Tamer Vanish dry, I can add the decals now. I'm only going to add the more salient ones. All this itty bitty stuff can go for a walk. The decals have a very nice finish to them and they do seem to adhere to the surface very well. These are some of the decals left over. After giving some time for the decals to dry, I've gone over the surface with a damp cloth to wipe away any residue. I then added a wash and then sealed everything in with a matte varnish. Now on these older books, there's quite an exhaust stain and I was going to use oils because it's quite a rich black, but I think in this scale it'd be too much. So I'm going to use a black pastel instead it just means that the stain won't be too overbearing. With the matte varnish dry, and it usually takes a few days with the stuff that I use, I can start assembling this bucket here. The kit's pito head I've cannibalised and I've used a drawing pin 
cut down to size to replace the part that I've cut off. Not 100% accurate, but far better than what the kit had to offer. The slipper tanks are very weak attachment points, almost like little bumps, no use to the man or beast. So I've drilled them out and used plastic rod just to give me a more secure fit into the wing. We use PVA glue for the simple reason I'm not 100% happy with them. Maybe at a later date I can add some Sea Eagle missiles to the wings. So with everything added underneath, I'll flip it round and start to add the bits on top. The main piece being the rear tailplane. The rest are just little antennas. Oh, and the refueling probe. So the finished buck. A really nice kit from Airfix. I really did enjoy building this. I do hope there's a 148 scale one in the pipeline. So I'll take a few still pictures and I want to thank you for watching.